The next section is about solving absolute value equations. I'm going to start with just a little bit of review, so hopefully this first part isn't new to you. So th if you remember, the definition of absolute value is a number's distance from zero. So if I ask you to find the absolute value of a number, you're going to think about it as if there were a number line and how many spaces it would be from zero. So for example, if I have negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5, the distance from 0 is 5 spaces, so the answer is going to be 5. If I just have positive 5, it's also 5 spaces from 0, so it's still going to be 5. The only time these problems get super tricky is when I put a negative sign outside of that. So if I have negative absolute value of 5, I know that the absolute value of 5 is just going to be positive 5, but then I'm going to have to add that negative in in the end. So I'm going to have to add that negative in, so it's going to actually be negative 5. The other type that I always see people making mistakes on are something like this. If I have negative absolute value of negative 5, once again, this value, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. I still need to bring down that negative, so it's actually still going to be negative 5. So just be really careful about those problems. One more little thing that you need to make sure that you know is if you have something like the absolute value of 3 minus 5, what you need to do to solve that one is take the stuff inside of the absolute value bars, so treat them like a parenthesis. If you remember from the order of operations, you always do parentheses first. So treat those things like they're parentheses. Subtract 3 minus 5, you get negative 2. Then we know that the absolute value of negative 2 is going to be a positive 2. So enough with review, let's go on to some of the new stuff. And for our new stuff, we are going to be solving equations. So our goal for all of these is to find x or whatever other variable I give you. So my first one, I have the absolute value of x equals 8. So for this type of problem, you actually can do this in your head. So I want you to think about what possible numbers can we put in for x in order for the absolute value of it to be 8. So if you thought that we can put in x equals 8, and x equals negative 8, you are exactly right. And what I would recommend that you always do with absolute values is that you check your answer. I think that's a good idea for every single one of these problems. So we have absolute value of x equals 8. Let's try both of our values. So absolute value of 8 equals 8. Is that true? Hopefully you said yes it is. That one's good. And our other possible value of x was negative 8. We're going to substitute that in. Absolute value of negative 8 equals 8. That is also true. So we're good. So we know that this is the right answer. Highly, highly recommended that you do that for all of these problems. It's easy to make mistakes. I'm going to give you another type that is kind of a special case. So I want you to think about the absolute value of x equals negative 3. So think about it. What can you possibly put in for x to get negative 3 when you take the absolute value? So if you thought that there's no possible value that you can put in for x, you're right. This is a no solution. If you ever see something where you have absolute value bars equals a negative, always going to be a no solution. So that's a special case for these type of problems. So here's one I want you to try on your own. And I'll give you a hint, it is not a no solution. Give this one a try, it's similar to number one. So your two possible values for x are 53 and negative 53. If you go back and check your answer, you will find that both of these work. Unfortunately, 1 and 3 you can do in your head, 2 you can do in your head, 
The rest of the ones that we're going to get, you really can't do them in your head. So let's say we have x plus 4 equals 3. You might be able to think about all the possible things that we could put in for x in order to get this to work. However, there's a faster way to do it. So the faster way to do it is to split this into two equations. So we split it into two equations. It is really important that when you're working with absolute value that you always try to split it up into two. If it's something you can't do in your head, you're going to split it. And another key thing is you will almost always get two answers. There's one case where we don't get two answers, where we just get one, but it's almost always going to give you two possible answers. So those are the two things I want you to look for. Okay, so what we're going to do, we split this up into two. I always like to draw arrows to show that I'm splitting it into two. So I'm going to take this stuff inside here, and I'm going to write this as x plus 4 equals 3. So that stuff inside of the absolute value bars can be a positive 3. However, we know that if we take the absolute value of a negative 3, we're also going to get 3. So you can also rewrite that as x plus 4 equals negative 3. From there, you are going to solve each of these equations. So you solve this one by subtracting 4 from both sides. That gives you x equals negative 1. You solve this one by also subtracting 4 from both sides. That gives you x equals negative 7. It is a good idea on this problem and all others to check your answers. So let's do that. So our original equation was the absolute value of x plus 4 equals 3. Let's try our first answer, which was negative 1. You'll find that negative 1 plus 4 is 3. We know that the absolute value of 3 is 3, so we're good on that one. Let's try the same thing with x equals negative 7. So this was x equals negative 1. For this one, you're going to substitute in negative 7 for x. You end up with getting that the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. We know that that's true, so we're good. These two answers are both correct, which was what we were aiming for. So this next one, I want you to try on your own. So please pause the video and try it. So for this one, if you do it, you will find that you split it up into two. Your first one is going to be x minus 5 equals 8. The second thing that you get when you split it is x minus 5 equals negative 8. What you're going to do from there is you're going to add 5 to both sides. You get x equals 13. You add 5 to both sides again. You get x equals negative 3. Be careful. Make sure that you're okay with these adding and subtracting of integers. And so these are our two answers. Just to be safe, I'm going to go back and check them. And on your tests and quizzes, I want you for all of these to check them. It's very important. So let's start with the x equals 13. When I substitute that, that back into the original equation, I do end up getting a very nice answer. I get the absolute value of positive 8 equals 8. Same thing if we substitute in x equals negative 3, you get, if you put that back into your original equation, x minus 5, absolute value of x minus 5 equals 8, you will get that the absolute value of negative 3 minus 5 is going to give you the absolute value of negative 8, which is equal to 8. So we're good on both of those. So we know that both of these answers are correct. So, moving on to a harder problem. Let's try this one. So, I have 3 times the absolute value of 4x plus 2 minus 7 equals 11. When you get something like this, there are many steps involved, but your first goal is to get these absolute value bars, everything here, by itself. So, you're going to get all of this stuff. By itself. It is important 
that you do not automatically use the distributed property. In this case, it actually would work, but in other cases, such as if there was a negative, it would mess up your whole problem. So I would just say, just try to do this problem by getting everything in the absolute value bars 100% by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this out on the side where I have a little more room. And we have three times that stuff in the bars. I'm gonna just put a, a dot there to show that it's times. Then we have plus seven equals 11. I'm gonna start by moving over that seven. You need to do that first, not by doing the three. So we're gonna start with that seven. That gives us three times the absolute value of 4x plus 2 equals 18. Once again, it's three times that stuff. In order to get rid of multiplying by 3, I have to divide everything by 3. What's going to happen on the left-hand side, this and this are going to cancel out. And by the way, do not do anything to the stuff in the bars. I now will have 4x plus two, absolute value of 4x plus two, equals six. So I am still not done. However, now it looks a little bit more similar to number five, which means that I can do what I did in numbers four and five. So continuing on with this problem, if you remember from four or five, I have to do what I did in those ones, which was splitting it up into two. So I will get 4x plus 2 equals 6, and 4x plus 2 equals negative 6. Now this is just an equation that you've had before. You had the similar type to these in chapter 2. So you're going to be solving these two separately. I'm going to start by moving over the 2 by subtraction. I'm going to start by moving over this two, also by subtraction. My final answer, once I do everything, I will get x equals 1 and x equals negative 2. Okay, important thing on this one. I did so much work. I do not want to go forward without being 100% certain that my answers are right. So I'm going to check my answers again. And in this case, it's going to be a pain because there's a lot of stuff going on. But it's a very, very, very good idea. So I have 3 times the absolute value of 4x plus 2 minus 7 equals 11. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my x equals 1. When I substitute in x equals 1, I get 3 times the absolute value of 4 times 1 plus 2 minus 7 equals 11. I get 3. So if you remember order of operations, I have to do the stuff inside of these absolute value bars first. I get 4 plus 2. That gives me 3 times the absolute value of 6, minus 7 equals 11. Absolute value of 6 is just going to be 6. I know that 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 7 is 11. And I know that that's true. 11 is going to be equal to 11. So that one is good. I'm only halfway done with checking. I'm going to do x equals negative 2. It is a long process, but it's a good idea to do, especially if you're taking a big test. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before using the original equation. I end up getting 3 times the absolute value of 4 times negative 2 plus 2 minus 7 equals 11. That gives me 3 times the absolute value of negative 8 plus 2 minus 7 equals 11. I'm going to go ahead and work my way up there. I get 3 times the absolute value of negative 6 minus 7 equals 11. Absolute value of negative 6 is going to be just 6. I end up getting 18 minus 7 equals 11. And that is a true statement, which is good. So I am very, very happy. Both of my answers are correct. 
So now I know this is a long and complicated process, but it's a necessary process, especially if you have a test or a quiz. I'll probably give one or two examples that are this long. So just make sure that you do it on those one or two examples on a test or a quiz because it's a good way to tell and make sure that you're right. Okay, here's another example. This one I would like you to try on your own. So we have 4 times the absolute value of t plus 9 minus 5 equals 19. I would like you to pause the video, take a few minutes, and try it. Okay, so if you work this out, remember that the first thing that you need to do, once again, is to get this stuff by itself. Do not try to do anything with splitting it up before you get that by itself. If you do, you will have disastrous results, meaning that you have to start the entire problem again, which is a huge disaster. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by moving over this 5. You will end up getting 4 plus the absolute value of t plus 9 is going to be equal to 24. We're going to then divide both sides by 4. Left-hand side, the 4s are going to cancel out, and I now just have the absolute value of t plus 9 equals 6. Once you get to that part, now you can split it up into two. We get t plus 9 equals 6. t plus 9 equals negative 6. You're going to subtract 9 from both sides. That gives you t equals negative 3. Once again, subtract 9 from both sides. That gives you t equals negative 15. You'll find that if you go back and check them, both of these answers are going to be right. I'm not going to check them, but I do recommend that you do that on your own. Okay, we have two more problems. This one is, it looks really horrible. Maybe not as horrible as like number six, but it still looks really horrible. However, as long as you don't mess up the order, you will find something nice. And I can guarantee there's going to be one of these on the test. I love these problems because it looks like you're going to do a lot of work, but you actually don't. So if you remember, your goal is to get these bars by itself. I am going to start by subtracting 6, which gives me 3x plus 5, absolute value of 3x plus 5 equals negative 4. Now, if you look back at the problem from number 2, you will notice, I think it was 2 or 3, um, yeah, it was 2, you'll notice that an absolute value equal to a negative is actually going to be a no solution. So you stop here, you write no solution, and you move on to another problem. Okay, next problem. This one, to be honest, I'm only probably going to do one that's this complicated on the test or quiz for honors. However, there's a very good chance on the CP test, I'll use this as a bonus. So I recommend that both groups do it. We're going to start by moving over this 7. You'll notice that we have a lot of negatives in this problem. And if you're not careful and you just say no solution, then unfortunately it's not right. Make sure that you solve for the absolute value bars before you decide something's a no solution. I'm going to start by adding 7 to both sides. That gives me negative 3 times the absolute value of n plus 2 equals negative 3. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. I end up getting the absolute value of n plus 2 equals 1. Unfortunately, I have an absolute value equals a positive. That is 100% allowed, so you can't stop here. you got to keep going. I'm going to redo it up here. So you do need to solve the rest of this problem out. The good news is the rest of this problem is not too horrible once you split it. So you split it into two, you get n plus two equals one, and n plus two equals negative one. I'm gonna subtract negative two from both sides. That gives me n equals negative one. Once again, subtract negative two from both sides. I get n equals negative three. 
I recommend that you go back and check on your own. I'm not going to show that step, but if you want to do that, it'll be very helpful for you. And if it's a quest, it's a tester quiz, definitely check the, that answer.